All right, um, I now restart the stream. Yeah, I had stream disconnect issues, so I'm gonna have to restart it again. But yeah, I had a disconnect issue, that's weird. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I had a stream disconnect issue. So my, apparently, what's weird is my internet disconnected a little bit. Uh. So if you guys still can't hear me, just refresh, okay? Just hit the refresh button on your browser and stuff, and I think you can hear me again. But yeah, I have not had this happen since I have the Ethernet cable and all that installed. So yeah, this is a new issue for me. Okay, now it's okay, good. Um, yeah, I had an internet disconnect. That That's weird. Uh, OBS had a um, weird thing. That was weird. This, this has not happened to me in any of my streams yet, so. So. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so we are around how many more miles we have left to go? 421 nautical miles. Oh, yeah, OBS, yeah, OBS could do some troublesome things. Yeah, that's for sure. But at least the good news is, is at least I, at least I dealt with it pretty e easily. I'm hoping it doesn't have it. Please, I pray that. That's the last thing I want. So, um, so, um, coming up this week, um, on Murph's stream as well, so I'm, as a part of a member of the Fireflies and Admin, so, uh, tomorrow is going to be another ATC series stuff. I probably need to get back to the ATC sort of stuff. I, I've been slacking off of it for a bit too long. So, I probably need to get back to that. So, okay, we now have two and a half hours of flight time remaining. We have about two and a half hours, so... We only got two and a half hours more than originally.
so um, now that we're getting ready to get closer to heading home, um, so there are some bit of uh, fun facts about Borneo. about the island itself. So there are some pretty interesting facts about the island of Borneo. Let's see. So here's some 25 fun facts about the island of Borneo. Um, it's home to um, Southeast Asia's tallest peak, um, Mount Kinabalu, which is actually what our what our final stop is actually named after. At around 4,095 meters above the coast of the island, and is sacred in local customs. Um, so it's got, it, Corneo is also home to, um, the largest flower species on Earth, the Raphacilia arnoldi. Um, it, it's a, the, the blue flower itself is around a meat, it has a, it, its diameter is around a meter long. It's a, um, um, it is actually named after British botanist Joseph Arnold, who, and Lady Ravels, who finished his sketch after he died. But it's the world's largest flower, and its claim to fame is it smells like decaying flesh. I kid you not. It's... But it's home to the world's largest flower species. And of course, it's got 54,000 orangutans as well. One of the great apes. Yeah, okay, there's the announcement. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I had to restart the stream again. <laughs> so guys, if you haven't refreshed it, re refreshed the stream and all that. But yeah, I had an internet disconnect issue. And, and, There's also a, you can take a river safari through the uh, jungle, through the uh, Kina Batagon River, which gives you a chance to um, go through the river. And of course, um, Borneo is extremely diverse in ethnicities. Over 200 indigenous groups call the island home. More than 50 of them have their own languages, and in, for example, in the in in Sarawak, the Ebon are the largest group. Hey, away from court. Good to see you, court. Um, this is Viper Strike 95, and I'm here. We're we're on our way over to uh, uh, Dakota Kinabalu. Um, we're about 400, not, we're about 400 nautical miles away from our destination. We took off from Singapore about a couple hours ago. If, if you wonder why the stream has only been live for nine minutes, it's because I had an internet issue sort of thing. So I had to actually, um, I had to actually restart the stream.
And that was the first two, two, nearly two and a half hours. So how was your stream, uh, Quartz? And good morning to you as well. Actually, for from home, it's actually good afternoon. Back at home. It's also got lots of beach, some really good beaches with white sands. With snorkeling and all that. And it's got one of the world's richest monarchs, too. The Sultan of Brunei, uh... Hassan al Bolaka has over 20 billion US dollars. And he has a huge palace, um, the Astana Norul in Brunei, with over 200,000 square meters and, set, and nearly 1,800 rooms. Oh yeah, and by the way, Borneo was the location of uh, the first survivor in the island of Palau Tiga. The tiny tropical island was the first series of survivors shot. We, we, they took the CRJ from to Vancouver from Edmonton and then from Vancouver to um, Ketchikan. Oh, nice. I've been to Ketchikan. I think I said this earlier, but I've been to Ketchikan on my last cruise. Really cool place. Um, we did get to see a, a lumberjack show, but Ketchikan's really, really cool. Very, very cool. So, all right, let's check our um, fuel tank. Um, we are 42% uh, of the mains. We're still doing really good. So I might not even have to refill for the rest of the trip, which is really, really good. Which is really, really good for the rest of the trip. So now I have plenty of range for the neck for the for the rest of the trip. Really, really good. Nice. Uh, you're now on Batsim, just practicing earlier. Nice. Yeah, good luck with that, Quark, um, on Batsim. You know, Batsim is quite a mm, challenge. I, I definitely want to get there one day, but um, I still got to wait a bit.
so so um so we're gonna get pretty much near it as well Okay, so I'm going to do another quiz, um, if you guys don't mind. Let's do a different one. Um, geography, yeah, let's do geography. Um, um, let's do Oceana, yeah, let's do Oceana. Um, since that's going to be the new world update. Um, let's do... Um, let's do um, the country of Oceana. Let's let's find all these countries located here in Oceana. We've got 14 of them, and let's see if we can do it within five minutes. Let's start with the Solomon Islands. That's correct. Then we have Vanatal. Actually, we have Fiji. Yeah, we have Samoa. We have Micronesia. Here, all oh, that's pure body. Um, we have we have New Cal. Uh, no, not New Cal. Um, we have. Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, um, New, no, not New Canada, it's still part of France. Um, I think it's um yeah Benetau and outside of Fiji I believe that Walt Yep, that's Tonga. Then outside of your body. Palau. Well, that's not it. Yep, Nauru. Um, let's. Tuvalu? And more silence. Hey, you got it. Yeah, Bonatel, there it is. That I completed in 2 minutes 52. Really, really cool. Completed 52 minutes. So yeah, guys, um, that is a geography lesson. So that's going to be Oceana. That's going to be our, where our new world update is going to be located here. Um, and we're I'm, I'm, I don't know how I'm going to plan to do this um, for Oceana, but pop, I'm definitely going to try Papua New Guinea. I've already done a flight in the Solomon Islands. I've already done some flying in the Solomons in New Caledonia, but definitely try, interested in trying Fiji. That would be pretty cool to try out. Let's see if we can get another quiz. Like I said, we have over an hour. To, we only have, we have two hours to go. 
Um, let's try a different one. Oceana. Let's do another Oceana one. Since we're, we get, we got a war update. Um, let's let's do them. World Lambo. Ah, sightseeing in Europe. Ooh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do another quiz. Um, European landmarks. There is twenty-five of them. Um. So we have 25 landmarks in Europe. This is going to be pretty cool. Okay, this one here is the Parthenon. Or, or more specific. Oh, that's Athens. I forgot. It's a city. That's the Parthenon in Athens. This here, it is actually going to be... That building right here could very well. That's, this is Florence, the Cathedral in Florence. This is Brandenburg Gate, and that belongs to Berlin in Germany. This landmark. This one is St. Petersburg. Um, oh, that's not Let's see. This is London. This is uh, Westminster. This one is Moscow. That is... Uh, it's Moscow. That's St. Basil's. This here is Venice. That's the Rialto Bridge. Um, that one here is Stockholm. Or that Oslo. That is Brussels. This one's Brussels. This is Atonium. That's Barcelona. That's Cigar Family. Familia. That's going to be finished in three years. I'll take the 787 out with the Star Wars livery. Cool. That's Rome. That's the Coliseum. That's Milan's Cathedral. That's Paris. That's the Eiffel Tower. Um... That is Strauss. Oh, that's Cologne. Yeah, that's Cologne's Cathedral. That's fake. Now, that is Budapest. That is their parliament building. That's the Hagia Sophia, and that's Istanbul, Turkey. Oh, that's not it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's Bucharest's... Um, that's Bucharest. Oh, that's, that's,
let's Ember? Ember? No. Uh, this is not good. What oh, is this crackle? I'm gonna give up. Oh, Vienna? This is the culprit? Okay. Feel about all oh, the Guggenheim is in it. Oh, it's Kiev. I spoke that that was definitely East from Kiev. Munich. Oh, that was the Royal Castle of Warsaw. Kaleski. Oh, St. Vincent, that's Prague. Madrid, that's the Royal Palace. And there's St. Petersburg, Lisbon. Oh. I gotcha. 777X with full wing tips. Yep, uh, the 777X. Yeah, it does have the... Um, it does have the full wing tips. Uh, and the reason it has full wing tips is because it allows it to reduce the wingspan. Meaning it can actually now fit into gates that are that currently used for the... Um, Current models. That's because if you know the Triple Seven X versus, let's say, the Triple Seven. If you look at the size of a Triple Seven X, it it is it it's 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 huge. The Triple Seven X is gargantuanly big. Um. I mean, compare that to the tr its previous generation, the normal Triple Seven. Um, for example, the biggest Triple Seven we know of is the 300 ER. Um, for example, the 300, for example, um, it's about 242 feet long. The Triple Seven X, the the nine variant, is 251. So it's even longer. Its wingspan is considerably bigger wingspan at 200 um, and 235 feet wingspan, which is 15% bigger than that. Its range is just stupidly massive range of 7,000 miles. It can, it can carry up in two class seats, can carry up to 426 people, which is considerably more than these triple seven normal one. But yeah, triple seven is the triple seven X is a massive bird. It's it's huge. Yes, PMDGC they might do the triple seven X, but maybe five years from now. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see what PMDG is going to do with the triple seven. That is that is a plane I am extremely excited for. Uh, Typhon, the triple seven X is just going to be so good of a fit. It, I mean, I can't wait for it because once we get the triple seven in the sim, um. 
there would finally be a uh, high high quality um, long haul plane, which is gonna be so nice for the really long flights. It's gonna be very very nice for those longer flights, which I think is gonna be great. I and that that thing is probably gonna definitely get the uh, liver treatment for the VA. Which is going to be super, super nice. Oh, the DC-6 just got updated. Uh, thank you. Thank you for mentioning it. I mean, the lights fly. But thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, the current 777 would still be popular. I can definitely see the, yeah, absolutely for the big plane. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely getting the livery. Yes, the ATR is going to be coming out April. Um, I'm definitely going to get my hands on that because, like I said, I, a regional turboprop liner is definitely something I was wanting to have. It's not letting me buy stuff in the marketplace no more. Oh, no. That's not good. Hey, um, super type. Hey, da Daedalus. Good to see you, Daedalus. Welcome on in. I think that's an issue quite a few people have had. Um... I did have a bit of a stream restart about three minutes ago. I had, an, I had a disconnect issue. So, but but so far a couple hours ago, I took off from Singapore. We're heading our way to Kota Kinabalu. We are about 330 miles away in the DC-3. We'll be there about two hours. We have 34% of the main tanks. We're still doing really good on the main tanks. Absolutely. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Everything's been running pretty smoothly now on this stream. So yeah, we're getting through pretty good.
so yeah, we're getting pretty close to here. Um, this this route. I do appreciate everyone for sticking with me for today. I really do appreciate it. So yeah, we are not too much farther at all. So yep, yeah, we're about we're about two hours left to go. They can't figure it out on the oh well. Uh, yeah, that's been an issue. Um what version do you have quartz? Um I was able to buy the EN2 the other day in the marketplace, and I have the Steam version of the game. Um if I mean that is weird though, to see unable to buy from the marketplace, that is that's a weird thing. Oh, you're in Windows Store. Ah, gotcha. That might be your issue with Windows. It's not been an issue with Steam, but... Yeah, everything seems to work, but... Oh, but yeah, can't... Am I still in the marketplace? That, that's... That must be a... That must be a Microsoft Store... Sort of thing. Try to add new payments, nothing. Delete your data cache, wait two minutes, and then turn it on. Try to add new payments, nothing. Ugh. Yeah, that's a that's a big issue. Yeah, hope that gets worked out. Like, I, I don't have that issue with me getting stuff in the marketplace. That's right, you made a post. Um, So Jane fixed so this thing is last time I bought something they took money then download. Ah yeah, um I think for me, if 
I, I think this is on Steam, but I put the funds in my account before I uh, did the thing. But I guess uh, it did not work. Uh, Yeah, sorry to hear about that. That that stinks. You can't get anything from the marketplace. Yeah, cause that internet ATR and Amazon's for sure. Uh mm -hmm. So let's see how much fuel we're gonna have um for here as well. Three one percent. Just keep checking the fuel because I remember the last time I forgot to check my fuel and my plane didn't do so well. But yeah, we're doing really, really well. We're about 300 mile, no, like miles. We've got 300 left to go. So, um, Hey, no mouth, but mouth scream. Good to see you. No one radio engines. You probably run out of oil before you do fuel. I guess that may be a good point. Good to see you. Uh, first time chat. Welcome on in. Um, I'm doing the Britley DC3 around the world trip. Um, this is like 15. We're, we took off from Singapore a couple hours ago. I had a stream restart about 40 minutes ago due to an internet disconnect. But now we're back. So we've about 300 miles left to go until our landing here at Kota Kinabalu. So yeah, good to see you. Um, welcome on in. So if you like, if you guys like the stream uh, and you want to follow along the channel, smash that follow button. It's like any support really appreciated. We just cracked the 600 followers uh, mark a couple of minutes ago. PNG DC3, please. Who knows? Yeah, I know PNG is working on their own DC3 as well, but.
Hey, dinner's ready. See you later. Um, take care, Dougal. See you later, Dougal. I hope you're doing well. I hope to see you soon, Dougal. And, um, and maybe we might see each other again later on the stream. I don't know. But I hope to see you soon again, Dougal. So, yeah, we're getting pretty, pretty close to getting there as well. But yeah, that is, that's pretty much it too. So yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me on this Sunday trip um, through, through Borneo and all that. So we are getting pretty close. I mean, we're doing really well. So I'm gonna show off two more slides of my slideshow. Um, first is gonna be the demographics of Borneo. Uh, demographically, um, most people in Borneo, um, the denominator for Borneo, for Borneo is a Bornean. There's over 23, 23,723,000 inhabitants. In a population of 30 inhabitants per square kilometer or 80 inhabitants per square mile, most of the population lives in the coastal cities. In the population consists as much of the Dayak ethnic groups, the Malays, Banjar, Idian, Bajaju, Soluk, Orang Ulu, Chinese, and Kazan Desun are the vast majority of the ethnic groups. Um, in terms of religion, 80.9% of people living in um, in Brunei, in Brunei, nearly everyone's 80, 80 nearly 81 percent of all people in Brunei are Muslim, followed by 7.1 percent Christian, 7 percent Buddhism, and 5 percent other religion. Then on the other side of Borneo, again similar to uh, Brunei, Islam is the predominant religion, but the rest of it's a mix between Protestantism, Roman Catholic, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, and 0.07 percent folk religion. And finally, in Malaysian, this is one that's pretty surprising. Only just 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 over half is are um, is is followed by 37% Christianity, 9% Buddhism, 0.3% Confucianism, and others, 0.1% Hinduism, and 1.3 don't even have a religion. Which is pretty crazy about the religion as well. These are some of the demographics. Um, and then, econo then economy-wise, um, Borneo's economy depends on agriculture, logging, and mining, oil and gas, and ecotourism. Brunei's, for example, in the Sultan of Brunei, they are very dependent on oil and gas for their sector. It's become one of the largest oil producers in all of Southeast Asia. Um, in Malaysia, the states of Sabah and Sarawak are both among the world's top exporters of temp of, t of lumber. And Saba itself is also an agricultural producer of rubber, cacao, and vegetables, as long as the fisheries. While Saba, Sarawak, and Luaban in, in Borneo also produce, uh, also export natural gas and petroleum. And finally, the Indian Asian province of Kalimantan are dependent on mining, as well as logging and oil. 
that makes up um uh, makes up for Borneo's economy. So that that is that's the last slide until we get to uh, Kota Kinabalu, which is going to be. So that is going to be the last stuff for that. We'll be getting ready to head off to. Um, Oh yeah, and one more thing about Borneo. Um, an interesting fact about Borneo is actually, um, is in in fact the island of Borneo, particularly in um, the southern part of the island, is where the capital of Indonesia is going to be moving to. Um, coming in, coming starting in 2024, Indonesia's new capital is going to be located in the in the island of Borneo at uh, Nusantara. Which is going to be their playing capital, replacing Jakarta, and that's because um, the issue Jakarta's had the last couple of, of, of years, the big issue has been um, why they wanted to move the capital. Um, is because Jakarta has had a lot of issues with. It's dense urbanization, but mainly the big one has been a lot of floods. And Jarkata's actually sinking into the ocean. Due to the lack of groundwater and all that, it's caused the... It's caused a lot of groundwater issues. So they're pl that's why they wanted to move to the island of Borneo. We might see the mountain. Oh, I think we definitely see the mountain on approach for sure. I think we'll definitely see it.
let's let's get outside for some outside. So Simon's still with us? Man, you're keeping up with me, Simon. But man, it's quite beautiful out here today. All right, guys. Um, so So there is something I do want to think about wanting to do. Hmm, let's see. Hmm. So, um, I have some pretty interesting Douglas, let's see if we find any facts about the Duck DC-3 facts. So, um, I've seen quite a few DC-3s during my time in real life. The one I saw was in the Delta Flight Museum, known as, um, Ship 40, which was what it was. But it was, but it was such an iconic plane as well, and it was all about du um, the history of Delta Airlines back in the Delta. It was one of their exhibits. They had a restored DC-3 as well. So you guys can still join me if you want to. I'm on Southeast Asia. Our closest airport is Romeo um, Bravo Golf Bravo. And this is Bintulu Airport. So yeah, I think we can see the mainland. Uh, the mainland of Malaysia is going to be the mainland of Borneo. It's about 110 nautical miles away from our stop.
So... I, I, okay, I, I'll do a quiz, but this time I'll do a longer one. Let's... Um... Let's do some gaming sort of stuff. You know, you know me as a video gamer? Um... <laughs> let's see... Video game systems, speed gaming... Okay, let's do this one. 15 minutes. Um, yes, we're going to need the 151 original Pokemon. Yes, if you guys never heard of Pokemon, uh, I, I understand you older guys may have not heard of it, but if you guys don't know about Pokemon, you probably live under a rock, but Pokemon is one of the most popular video game franchises ever. Um, it's originally called Pocket Monsters in Japan, but it's an extremely popular. I mean, if you guys want to know how many Pokemon games they sold, um... They have sold nearly 440 million copies sold of games. So let's start with uh, the list. Let's play this quiz, shall we? So, the first Pokemon on the list it is Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is then evolves into Ivysaur at level, and then to Venusaur. They're like dinosaurs, but with that. Then we have Squirtle. Actually, that's... Then there's uh, Charmander. So you have the three different main types, the grass, water, and fire types. They all counter each other, basically. Then from Charmeleon is Charmeleon. Charmeleon. Then, then one of the most famous Pokemon of all time, Charizard. The one of the most famous Pokemon of all time, Charizard. Oh yeah, yeah, Pokemon. Yeah. Then we have War Turtle. And then, then the famous last choice. Then afterwards we have the Pidgey. Pidgeotto. Let's see what we have. Ekans. Arbok. Oh, bruh. Yes, Atkins and Arbok are pretty first named Snakes. Hero. Um, then we have um, Mew. Mewtwo. Another famous. Then how about the mascot? Pikachu. The mascot in its evolution, Raichu. You, Abra, Dabra, Alakazam, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Rhydon, Rhyhorn, Rhyhorn was the original Pokemon Rhydon, then we have Nidoran. Yes, there's male and female Nidoran. They are all different versions, uh, by the way. Then we have Nido Queen, Nido King, Nido Reno, Nidorina. Yes, because the male and female Nidorans have their own line of evolutions. Idiot. Idiot. Idioto. 
Then we have Rattata. Rattata King. Firo. Then we have Golem. You dude. Rattler. Articuno, the three legendary birds, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres. We have the three original legendaries, Jinx. Yes, Jinx. Um, we have Hypno, Rousey. Um, then we have Ghastly. Ghastly. King, Gengar, Hunter, yeah, Ghastly, Muck, Rhymer, Boyster, Belder, Exec, uh, executor. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Viper Strike's gonna to try to find the rest. Um, Star You. Star. Star me. Star you. Eevee. Jolteon. Vaporeon. Flareon. Flareon. That's the three evolutions you get in... We have, let's see, Machoke, Machop, Machamp. Those are the three fighting types. Hit on Lee. Grass types. Oh, Bell Sprout, mm -hmm. Weeping Bell, Victory, Victory Bell, um, oh, let's see. Water. Oh, Snorlax, Oros, the king of competitive uh, generation one. We have Slowbro, Low, Slowpoke. Uh, we have quite a few other water types um, as well. Oh, uh, let's see what else. Oh, Lapras. Lapras is one of them. Oh, the fairy. In fact, the fairy was originally supposed to be the man. The fable. Jigglypuff. Uh, and Wigglytuff. Okay. But yeah, there's 150. Uh, Caterpie. 
Metapod Butterfree? Yeah, Butterfree. Then Weedle, Hakuna, Beedrill. Got those. Let's see. Uh, Sand True. And Sand Slash. Okay. Then there's the Vulpex, Nine Tails. That's three, yeah. Dubat, Golbat. Um, and I think Gloom, yeah, Gloom's from the original. Oddish, Vile Plume, Paras, Parasect. I know that. Better that than a ma. Giglet. Dog Trio. Meow. Um. Meow. Uh, part of Team Rocket. And then Persian. Persian is that. Um. Cyda. In Gold Duck. That's his evolution. On Growlithe. I T H E. And of course, Arkin. Mankey. Primate. <laughs> then there's Poliwag, Poliwhirl. They're both water types, and then the Poliwrap, the water fight. Oh, we can tell. That's it. Yeah. It, and there, there, and then there's the tentacle line. Tentacle. Okay, that's a hundred six of the hundred and one Pokemon. Then there's Ponyta. Rapidash. Magamite. Magneton. Farfetched. Go Duo, Go Trio, Go Drio, Seal, Yugong, Onyx, oh yeah, I forgot Onyx is in there, Krabby, Pingler, Old Torb, Black Code. Execute. Executor. U Bone, Marowak. Hitmon Lee, Hitmon, Hitmon Chan. Oh, uh, it. Can't see Angela. Popping, wheezing. They're both poison types. Hmm. 
Kings Con, Horsey, Cedra, Cedra, I believe, Fourteen, B King, Mr. Mime, um, Cypher, Jinx, um, Pinsir? Oh. Electro Buzz and. Oh, it's Electabuzz. Uh, Electabuzz and Magmar. Then we have Magikarp. You guys remember catching those in the Pokemon games, the little Magikarps? And then obviously. Then of course you want to, it's worth it because you want to catch the Gyarados. Ditto. Porygon. Alma Star. Omen Yike. Caputo. Pops. No, I don't have time. Oh, in the last three. Dr and that's the Dratini line. Dratini, Dragonair, and of course, the famous uh, pseudo-legendary Dragonite. Okay, 17% on the tanks. Hey, doing pretty good. So yeah, um, I did pretty good. 148 out of 151 original Pokemon. <laughs> In fact, currently right now, in terms of the number of Pokemon that exist in um, the Pokemon world so far, in the Pokemon universe, um, uh, according to, um, so far, um, there is around 1,015 species of Pokemon throughout the Pokemon main series. Um, throughout its currently nine generations of Pokemon games. We have over a thousand of them, which is pretty crazy to think about it. Which is pretty nuts. Um, they usually add around a hundred Pokemon each generation. Each new gen has around a hundred new Pokemon added to each gen. And I mean, they have all sorts of rarities and stuff from your starters you get, like, like Bulbasaur from Generation 1. Um, um, Tur um, Chimchar in Generation 4, or most people's favorite generation, Generation 3 with Mudkip. Two rare and legendary Pokemon like Mewtwo from Gen 1. You have Celebi from Gen 2, or, or from Generation or from one of the newest generations, Generation um, Generation 7 brought in um, Solgaleo and Lunala. All this sort of stuff. But Pokemon, there's so many generations, it's not funny. So, that's just something pretty cool to, uh, to test my knowledge. Like I said, that proved I'm not just knowledgeable on sports or geography. I'm more knowledge, I'm knowledgeable about all sorts of things. So yeah, after this, I'll be working on more of my research notes. I'll hopefully get it done soon. So yeah, we're getting pretty, pretty close. I think we're getting about um, 50 nautical miles away from reaching the mainland of yeah, Borneo. So we're gonna reach there. 
So thank you guys so much for coming around in today's stream. I know it's been quite a long one today. But I don't know. I don't know much about Pokemon. I probably wouldn't make it to 50. Yeah. Like I said, there's over a thousand Pokemon throughout the years. So find which one for Generation 1 would take a little bit of thinking. But eventually got down to it. But I bet if you're a hardcore Pokemon fan, you would probably know them all pretty quickly. You wouldn't. Take as much time as I would. So there is that as well. So yeah, we're about 196 nautical miles. We just made under 200 nautical miles left to go on the trip. So we'll get there at a pretty good time. So yeah, um, so again, uh, for all you guys who are still here, on Wednesday we do have a flight on with an airliner stream. We'll be doing the Yankees Charters Achievement for Firefly Air. We'll be making our way from Tampa to New York LaGuardia. We're transporting the New York Yankees to their spring train site. And then, um, on Wednesday, we'll be doing a D, uh, Antop A2 flight. The question is, I'm probably thinking, uh, after looking back forth, I might do more of the Balkans. Maybe starting with, maybe in Bosnia? We'll travel from Bosnia to Albania. Again, we're going to go through Sarvejo and all that. Which would be pretty cool. We'll be doing some flying around the Balkans for sure. So that is going to be probably be on Friday. And then next Wednesday, we'll be back in the DC-3 and we'll be heading to the Philippines. We'll cross over from Borneo into the Philippines. We'll be going through the island of Palawan. And we'll be well, mainly outside of Manila we, and into Laog. Which, by the way, I believe was right near where our journey ended in in our um, Philippine series. I believe that's where it was ended, right at the airport.
So yeah, that's going to be for the plans for the next week or so. So yeah, we have about under an hour to go. Um, our next waypoint is just going to be outside of the city of Miri. And yes, we are pretty close to the isle, uh, to the Sultanate of Brunei. Um, some bit of information about the Sultanate of Brunei. Um, the Sultan has actually been around. Well, the history of the Sultanate goes back all the way back to the to the 14th, 15th century. The modern Sultanate actually only gained independence after 1984. It actually gained independence in 1984. Um, and it's, a, it's actually an autocratic absolute monarch. And it, it is among, um, in, in GDP per capita, um, at around 31.94 billion, but it's ninth in per capita with a $74,952 per person. And its largest and its capital largest city is Bandar Seri Begawan. I do appreciate everyone here for sticking around with me today. I do appreciate it as well. It's been quite a stream today um, with the heavy rain early in the day. Then we had the internet disconnection, unfortunately, unfortunate one. Restart the stream. I don't know how that happened because I never had the internet issue with my previous one. So yeah, there it is. We finally made it to the mainland in Borneo. We finally made it to the mainland um, in Borneo. Beautiful view into Malay, uh, into uh, into Borneo. So we actually get to have some of that today. And I think now should be a good time to switch tanks. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and switch tanks for the rest of the trip. So let's switch to left ox. Let's switch this to the right auxiliary tank. Let's finish the rest of it. I didn't want to take any chance with the fuel. And I mean that that's more than enough fuel, especially from that altitude. 
But what a great flight, everyone. This has been a lot of fun. A beautiful, beautiful trip. So yeah, guys, I think, um, I, I do have several stream ideas, um, for future streams. Um, I know after that new flight from the airliners, I say the next one I'm thinking about. Um, for the next one I've been thinking about, uh, that's a good question. For the next one, there's quite a few interesting destinations I've been thinking about visiting. So there's quite a few really good ones. If you guys have any ideas, I do can have it in the Discord. I think I have it in the flight ideas thing in my Discord. Here it is. So in my Discord, I bet you guys can give me some ideas. I have future flight ideas here in the Discord. I haven't done much of it. So if you guys have some really cool ideas, let me know. It could be for GA flights. It could be an airline flight. there's that as well Hey, good to see you. Um, Eva Stooley, good to see you. Um, T. Um, T. Uh, Talco Al Um, let me, let me, let me get that translated. It's Romanian. Romanian to English. Oh, I asked if, if it's hot in here. Um, it's not that hot out there um, at all. In fact, in my home state, uh, today's weather is 
um, at 6 degrees Fahrenheit or, um, or in Celsius, it is actually 16 degrees Celsius, where I'm from. So it's not that hot here. It's, it's, it's actually a pretty good temperature. The temperature is actually a good place at all. Ah, oh, it's today's my first day at uh, tea with. Ah. Oh. Welcome on in. Um, so yeah, I've been to Romania in the sim, actually. Um, I flew around Transylvania twice around Transylvania, one for a Halloween stream, and then the other time was for the Orient Express trip we flew through, I flew much through Transylvania and all that in the region. Oh, you're actually from Brazil. Oh, is that Portuguese? Oh, and you? Um, I'm from, I'm from the United States, uh, Ava Stoli. Oh, it's it picked up Romanian, but oh, it's Braz, it's Brazilian Portuguese. Oh, let me go ahead and translate. Ah, oh. oh, got it. Ah, oh, the heat there. Okay, got it. It's port. It, yeah, it's Portuguese. I've flown Brazil many times in the sim. Um, um, we actually we actually have a hub in Brazil. Um, in Rio, and there's flights all across Brazil and South America. So I've been playing flying around Brazil. It's definitely great. I would, lo and like I said, I would love to see you get a one day. I think it'd be beautiful. I am from uh, the state of Indiana. I am the. I'm from the U.S. state of Indiana. Actually, is my home state. Indiana being well, was the 19th state of the United States in the Union. From the 19th state of the Union, founded in 18th minute to the Union, December 11th, 1816. So, yeah, I'm a I'm a Hoosier. Um, basically, and before we want to ask, Hoosier is basically is the official denominator for someone from Indiana. Yes, it sounds weird compared to let's say. A New Yorker or or Pennsylvanian Hoosier definitely sounds pretty interesting. Oh, it's cool to talk to you on YouTube. I can't talk to other people. Yeah, that's probably the great thing about Twitch. It's much easier to talk to people, and interact on Twitch compared to normal. But yeah, it's great to great to see someone from um, Brazil here as well. So we're gonna go ahead and turn a little bit into pretty soon. We are 159 miles. We're heading to Kota Kinabalu. We took off from Singapore a couple of hours ago. I learned English. Sorry. Hey, no, no worries. Um. No worries at all about learning English. Like I said, English, uh, for non-English speakers, English is a very difficult language, actually. I kid you not. English is very difficult to learn, trust me. It, I mean, there are times as English natives, we mess up on words, and, and, and I'm an English native. Um, as well, and that that's very tricky. Especially for someone who is just learning English, it's so hard to learn. So I completely understand. <laughs> no worries, like I, 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 it's a tricky one. See, so yeah, if you like, if you like the content, um, one of the best ways to do it is smash that ball. If you're liking the content and if you want to learn more, smashing that ball button would go a long way. To have help. Oh, what do you do in your life? 
Ah, great question. So what I do in my life outside of the, uh, being a streamer, um, I do help with some volunteering stuff. I'm currently doing volunteering work um, for researching um, one of the baseball players. I'm currently doing the uh, assignment for um, for research for baseball players. I do it for Louisville Slugger, so I'm currently helping with some research stuff. And then outside of that, I just help my family out around the house and all that. I do have a college degree from Indiana University Southeast for biology, but I just it's it's been hard to find jobs for people like me with autism and special needs so so um to, i'm still waiting for my full job opportunity at some point so that's why i'm doing this streaming stuff just for fun and give me something to do because i haven't had much opportunity ah neat thank you um, i appreciate it I have a friend that lives in Dallas, and he, oh, he pilots the Phenom 100 jet. Ah, uh, that's cool. I would love to have a jet myself. And hey, thank you so much, A.V. Still. A.V. Also Still. Thank you so much for the follow. Really do appreciate it as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, but the Phenom 100, that's a really cool little uh, business jet small light business jet um definitely a pretty cool little jet for sure they obviously it's way out of my price range but that's that's really cool if someone gets to actually pilot their own private jet that that's neat but, i mean Yeah we're, yeah, we're gonna get a Phenom 100 for the Sim uh, for Microsoft Flight Sim. So we're gonna have one of those coming to the Sim soon. I, I'm not really a business jet kind of guy. That's probably why I'm not wanting to buy it here as much. I'm not really a business jet kind of guy. But like I said, there has been going a long way with business jets. Um, we have we have the Citation Mustang from Coxburr um, here as well. We have the Flight FX um, Honda jets come into the sim. Um, I don't know. It's not a really a business jet, but we do have the um, Vision jet, the Sears Vision jet from Flight FX as well. And I think we're going to get a couple more business jets coming pretty soon. So, there's quite a few things as well. Really, really cool. Are you are you know about the ATR? Yeah, the ATR is going to come in the sim. I'm definitely very interested in the ATR um, as well. But yeah, the ATR is going to be a very nice plane for the sim, and I think it's great that the ATR is finally coming to the sim. We have a turboprop regional liner. That's going to be great for the sim because there's there's tons of commercial airports that. Um, that can only be accessed with planes like these, um, in those small strips. So I think the ATR is going to be a great fit for the Seven. It goes quite fast. The range is pretty decent. I think the ATR is going to be a great fit for the Seven. I can't wait for it. I'll definitely put that thing in the air for sure. Yeah, loads of us know. Yeah, a lot of us know about this. Um, if you do. I do have a Discord as well, so if you want to keep track of my streams and hear that, I have a Discord as well. 
yeah the atr is definitely a plane i'm very very excited to have here in sim but actually another um plane i'm actually excited for um the, a plane that i'm waiting for is the dash eight which is going to be coming out I, I believe 2024 would be the dash eight coming to the sim which um, which would be really really cool and then pilots is currently helping developing the dash seven i'm waiting for that to come as well the dash seven is um basically a four engine twin honor with with really good performance as well i'm very excited for that but yeah i'm very excited for um the new turbo prop planes i i think they're gonna be really really good can't wait for them. Hmm. So yeah, to our right, um, um, to our right, it is the island nation of Brunei is to our right. Um, Home to one of the world's largest royal palace. Um, Yeah, the ATR is going to be released um, in April. The ATR 72 um, is going to come out in it's going to come out in April, um, which is going to actually is actually going to come out then, which is going to be pretty cool. So it's finally going to come out in 2023. It's going to finally come out in April. So that would be a, the new roadmap is going to be the ATR. That's going to come in April. The extra series, which is going to be the ATR 42 in, in 72 planes, are going to come out April 25th. Along with World Update 13, which is going to be Oceana. So they're going to come out the same date. Which is going to be really, really cool. So yeah, I'm pretty excited for it. Um, in the new world update, um, definitely gonna do some flying around the, um, definitely flying around a bunch of Oceana. Now I haven't flown back much of New Zealand since the world update because so many people are flying to New Zealand. I'm gonna wait to be a good time. Um, some interesting things about the Sultanate um, of Brunei. As a matter of fact, on the Sultan, he is Hassan al Bokana. And here's some pretty fun things. He has a massive private car collection. You see, because he's a big um, car passion guy. And here's some of the cars he has collected. He has over 7,000 7, cars including a collection of Ferrari F40s. He bought a, he bought 11 of them. He also has a collection of uh, McLaren F1s. He purchased 10 of those. He got the the very rare um, Bugatti EB110s, which is the previous Bugatti before they made the Veyron. And he has the Guinness World Record for the largest private Rolls Royce collection. He has 500 Rolls Royce cars.
pretty crazy stuff. He has a massive car collection. Um, pretty huge. To say the least. So, um, so we should be getting close, and I think we see the capital right here. This is Bandar Seri Begawan, right in front of us, that big old industrial area. That's the capital. There it is. Here's the capital of So yep, we're about 110 nautical miles away. We're getting very, very close. I guess we're going to do one more quiz for today. This will be the last one we do. We're going to go with uh, sports again. Let's go sports one more time. This time we're going to do the NFL, the National Football League. Okay, let's try this one. Let's go with... Let's go with... Let's go with... Matt. Yeah, let's go with the Madden cover players. Oh boy. Now, if you guys don't know Madden, Madden's basically the official licensed NFL game. So, apparently there's some sort of curse that goes on if your name's on the cover. So, let's start with the year 2000, starting with the Lions, and we go all the way down to the Chiefs. And we go all the way to 2022, the most recent Madden game. Let's, let's begin, guys. Let's do this quiz. 2000 was Barry Sanders, um, the former uh, legendary Detroit Lion. He was also the cover of Madden 25. 2001 was Madden 2001. He was covered by the uh, Tennessee Titans. His name is Steve McNair. Uh, no, that's not yes, Steve McNair. No, wait, Eddie George was actually. It was Eddie George that year. Yeah, Eddie George. 2002's cover for the Minnesota Vikings was Randy Moss. No, it was actually no, it was actually Dante Culpepper. 
it's the cold pepper. No, that's not. Um, okay. Uh, two dollars three was the Rams. That guy was Marshall Hawk. Madden two thousand four was another very well known game in the franchise, and its cover was uh, Michael Vick. He was the number one pick of the two thousand one draft. Michael Vick. Then 2005, led by the greatest Baltimore Raven of all time, Ray Lewis. Legendary linebacker, made 13 all pros. The Eagles in 2006 had Donovan McNabb. The 2007 was Sean Alexander. He was, um... Hey, uh, good to see you, uh, Beamit. Holy crap, Beamit with a huge rate. Um, great to see you, Beamit. Great to see you, my dear. How you been doing? Why not lock with the follow? Thank you so much. I was not expecting the big raid today, guys. Welcome on in. So, yes, we are headed on our way to um, Kota Kinabalu from Singapore. We were on the air. Um, a, we had a two-hour thing earlier from Singapore to there. Then I had an internet disconnection. So I had to restart the stream back up. And we're about... Less than 100 miles away. Great to see you guys. I hope you're doing well. So, I hope you had a fantastic stream, B-Mint. And I hope you guys, with B-Mint's raid, had a ton of fun on her stream. Let me give her a shout-out. She, she is a legend in the community of Twitch partner. And she makes some great fights and content. Yes, I'm flying the DC-3. This is the currently DC-3 World Tour recreation. I'm recreating the entire world tour that Brittany did in 2017. Uh, start in Geneva. We had a couple of long flights. We went to from Geneva to Zagreb to Athens, then Athens to Tel Aviv, then to Amman, Jordan, to Bahrain, Doha, Qatar, Dubai, Karachi, Nagpur, India, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Phuket, then we went to Kuala Lumpur in Singapore, and now we're heading there as well. So we have a long journey, and we still have a lot more to go. This is only like 15. We still have flights to the Philippines, Macau, Taiwan, Japan, the US, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, and Europe. So we still have a long ways to go on this journey, but thank you guys so much for coming along today. So, thank you for the follow. Kickspy and Admiral Neymar, thank you guys so much for the follows. Yes, I, I love the DC-3. It's definitely one of my favorites. So, thank you guys so, so much for coming on today. So, yeah, we I was doing one last uh, quiz earlier. Because, like I said, these flights take a long time. This lake, for particular, is 791 nautical miles. So that's quite a long flight in a DC-3. In fact, the longest flight that's coming up is actually going to be um, from Japan to Alaska to the Aleutian Islands. And that's going to be... It's going to be 1,300 nautical miles in a DC-3. Like, what? It's crazy. So we got some pretty long flying to come ahead. So, I have a quiz. I, I still need to finish my quiz. Uh, so, we've got one minute remaining. So, I'm doing the Madden cover players. So, 2008, we have Sean Alexander. Um, uh, for the Titans, we have Vince Young. Uh, the Packers and Jets, Brett Favre. Uh, the, the, uh, Brett Favre. For the Steelers, we have Troy Polamalu. Uh... And Larry Fitzgerald. Then we actually have, uh, for the Saints, we have Drew Brees. Point to with the Browns is, believe it or not, the one-year wonder of Peyton Hillis. I kid you not. The Lions have Calvin Johnson. The Vikings, all's out of second cover, and that is Adrian Peterson. The Seahawks again, this time with uh, Richard Sherman. The Giants have Odell Beckham. The Patriots have Tom Brady. Rob Gronkowski. Uh, 
Um, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, uh, okay, it was Dante Culpepper. I spelled Dante wrong. Sean Alexander, okay. Then the Tony, I would have picked the Tony Brown, Lamar Jackson. So that's going to be it. <laughs> well, that was my last quiz for today, um, guys. So we have Simon, 3773 flying long, and we also have Mongo in the in the F6F Hellcat. So right here to our right, this is the Sultan and Brunei's capital, um, Wandar Seri Begawan. So that, that is their um, capital, believe it or not. Which is pretty, pretty cool. I do, I posted a link in my Discord. So if you guys do want to join in on my Discord and um, get to contact my streams, to do that. So we are around 86 nautical miles away from our trip. Um, for guys who don't know, I am Viper Strike 95. I've done flight sim streaming since 2021. I've done plenty of flight sim series as well on my channel. We visited basically nearly everywhere around the world. I've done historical stuff. I've done sports. I've done nearly anything you want. And my passion is to bring the knowledge and research to all of us here. So we are about 84 nautical miles here. Um, we're gonna go, I have the slideshow. We're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, Kota Kinabalu, actually. Let's go ahead and talk about um, Kota Kinabalu. Um, Kinabalu is located in this, it's the state capital of the Saba region in Malaysia. Um, it's located in the Northwest coast of Borneo facing the South China Sea. It, it's uh, to the west is Tunku Abdul National Park. Um, to the west and to the east um, is Mount Kinabalu, which actually gives the, the city the name, which is the highest point in, in all of Malaysia in the island of Borneo at 13,435 feet. Um, population wise, it's around um, 700, uh, 500,000 people in the city municipal, while the wider area is around 731,000. It grew quite a bit during the 15th century under the influence of the Empire of Brunei. But it, however, it really firmly set up during the 20th century, it really grew as a major train port in the area. But a lot of it was destroyed by World War II and the Japanese occupation as well. So it was rebuilt after the war and it became the capital of Saba. Um, currently right now it's a major tourist destination for, for travelers visiting the area. You can find Kinabalu Park, one of Malaysia's first national parks. You can also visit um, quite a few other areas too. It's got lots of uh, cultural stuff. It has the state, uh, the Saba Museum, which is got all sorts of um, art galleries. Um, it's got archaeology, history, national museum, and more as well. And of course, it's also got um, it's also got some leisure stuff. You can find all sorts of islands around here. And you can find the Mercadus Square as well, which celebrates uh, Saba's independence and the formation of Malaysia. And you can find one of the oldest pre-World War II buildings to survive, the Atkinson Clock Tower. The pretty cool stuff about this um, island is what, the city. And of course, there's also the city mosque, which is the largest mosque in, in the city. And surrounded by a man made lagoon, um, it is popularly known as the Floating Mosque because um, of an optical illusion, it appears to be floating in the water. And of course, um, if you if you're an adventurous kind of person, um, why would you not want to go up to Mount Kinabalu, the highest mountain in Malaysia? It's also a UNESCO World Heritage Site in its own national park, and it's it's a very easy mountain to access. You can access access this mountain really easily through um, 
throughout the city. You could easily access it to the National Park. Obviously, you still need to have a credit guide to get up the mountain. However, it's actually a pretty... It's actually... Um, there is quite a few mountains as well. And finally, the last is, is actually Low Lock Cowing Nat Wildlife Park. It is both a zoo and a biological garden here in the in the city as well. And it is a 200 acre um, facility as well. And it is the largest zoo in the entire country, in fact, is found here as well. So that is a little bit about Kota Kinabalu. Yes, it is true. Some of the mountains do have a face of a, of a person. So we do have that as well. We're gonna go 1,500 feet. We're gonna do 200 feet. 200 feet. We're gonna slowly descend into this. 200 feet per minute. We're gonna finally make our top of descent as well into this region. I mean, today has been a great day for the channel for sure. We we actually, if we come on both the streams and stuff, uh, we actually had. Four raids today. That is pretty awesome today. Today has been a great day with content as well. Thank you guys so much for coming into today's stream. And greatly appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're gonna get our way down. You guys are more than welcome to join me on on the descent. Um, we're right next to Whiskey Bravo Kilo Lima. It's our nearest airport, so if you want to fly along with us, you're more than free to join along. So, you guys are all more than welcome to join along with us. Well, we do have someone flying with us as well. We have John Two One. He's not with us, but we have Mongo and Simon with us too. Oh yeah, and we do do group flights here too. By the way.
So right here, guys, I, I think, guys, we see Mount Kinabalu right ahead. I mean, that, that's a dead giveaway. That's Mount Kinabalu. That, that's a dead giveaway if I see one right there. There's Kinabalu. There's, there's the tall peak. Yeah, depending on what altitude, you can see it from 300 miles away. Yeah, exactly. Depending on your altitude, you can see it far, far away. Yeah, there's Mount Kinabalu. So we can definitely see from here, here's some more Borneo. Um, there's tons of animals that live in the rainforest. There's, Borneo's home to some of the world's oldest rainforest, and um, it's home to all sorts of animals as well. From the orangut from the ubiquitous orangutan to, to um, the Borneo elephant. And, and much more, there's tons of, um, animals all over the place. Does flow free autopilot function in place with, uh, without autopilot? Um, good question, actually. Um, not really. I don't think so. But for this DC-3, it does work for it. For example. So, by the way, guys, since we're about 45 nautical miles away, and we're going to get pretty close, why don't we get our landing prediction set up? So, I'm going to do negative 95. But you guys can type in what negative number you guys want.
So thank you guys for the predictions. So we're getting pretty close. So here it is. There's Kota Kinabalu uh, coming in here pretty shortly. And yes, there's Mount Kinabalu in the distance. So. so. So, um, so guys, if you want to know what I'm doing, um, so Wednesday we're going to fly to Tampa to New York uh, for to get the Yankees prepared for spring training. Then on on Friday we'll be in the Antonov AN2 doing some flying around um, Southern Europe, in Southeast Europe, and finally on Sunday we're going to be heading all the way to to the Philippines to to Lao. Talaoing, Talaoing Philippines. We're going to be going through much of the Philippine Cups. Which would definitely be some really good. So here it is. Um, we're, we're getting right near it. I think our airport's going to come up pretty soon. 24 nautical miles remaining.
to you guys. I really do appreciate you all being here as well. And we're just about under 15 nomic miles from landing. We have Kota Kinabalu in sight. Just gonna get ready to get the landing. And get this dream pretty much wrapped up. We had a great time today. I've been in the air for over five hours, nearly five hours of flying. That's pretty awesome. So we're about we're just newly there. There is Kota Kinabalu. We're gonna land at runway. We're gonna land straight in zero two. Welcome to Kova Kinabalu, guys. So that's it guys, we're about to land. Welcome to, welcome back to Malaysia, everyone. Yeah, the approach looks, it is, it looks awesome. What a great stream, we've been in the air for five hours, basically, in the air. What an amazing flight in the DC-3. Definitely a rough beginning, but man, did it turn good at the end. Approach right. Six.
Beautiful for beautiful inning. Negative 180, that's fine. That's a fine. Perfect, guys. We made it. We made it all the way to go to Kingdom Ballroom. We're just gonna turn right here. We're just gonna find some parking. We're gonna find any open parking I can find. There's no one here. We have Mongo and a Hellcat. Simon's gonna come down pretty soon. The fun I mean, you could. Yeah, great flight, everyone. That has been that was a lot of fun. We still have plenty of fuel left. We could. Now we're gonna park. So welcome to Kota Kinabalu. Welcome to Malaysia. Welcome back to Malaysia, everyone. And that is it, everyone. We have done it. Leg 15 of our trip. Man, we've already been through 15 legs already, guys. Is your final slide this airport? Oh my gosh, I forgot the final slide is the final. Oh my god, I forgot all about it. <laughs> oh, Here's Kota Kimbalu Airport, um, guys. Whiskey Bravo Kilo Kilo um, it is the main international airport of the city. 8 million passengers went there in 2017, making it the second busiest airport in all of Malaysia, believe it or not. It, with the medium-sized airport, it has connections across most aviation hubs in Asia Pacific. So that is it, everyone. We got it done. So, guys, thank you so much for coming here today. I know today's been a crazy day. Four raids. Thank you guys so much to BMIT, Murph, Port, and, and Sergeant Staff. Thank you guys for the raids. Thank you a bunch of guys for the new falls. I've now cracked 600 followers today. Thank you guys so much. So, we're going to go raid my uh, the good folks at the Shadow Display Team. Uh Close friends of ours, close friends of this community as well. Thank you guys so much for this. And I'm going to be seeing you all on Wednesday as we will take the 747 into New York LaGuardia. Stick around for the ride, guys, and have a great rest of your Sunday. Bye!